principle of the individual and the collective. The individual and the collective are the two faces of the one coin. A person who wishes to live fully as a human being needs to understand that the existence of one's unique individuality has to be acknowledged as well as the existence of the collective. One cannot exist without the other, although many have gone to the extremes of both with very damaging results. Those systems which develop the collective aspect at the expense of the individual become rigid, autocratic, uncreative, cruel, often imposing a sterile uniformity on human thought and action. Thinking that this maintains the harmony and the order. Those systems, whether social, religious or political, that develop individualism above everything else, can create a certain narcissism, a self-indulgence, resulting in a personal sense of isolation. And this alienation is often the result of not developing those values of tolerance and acceptance, which are such a necessary part of human coexistence. The individual who is developing spiritually feels a personal sense of value, recognizes clearly his uniqueness without any false humility, and has the feeling that there is the freedom to be whatever he chooses to be. Simultaneously, his sense of personal independence allows him to come close to others and work with them. There is not a selfish independence. A true independence enables one to come close to others because already they have found within their own self their fulfillment, so they don't need to take, but they share. A person who has truly discovered the value of the self will never get stuck on it and balloon himself up with an illusionary identity which is based on labels and external achievements. Someone who has truly found the value of the self goes beyond the labels, the name, the fame and approval. The individual who has found true self-value can effectively cooperate within the collective, interacting with appropriateness. He feels a part of the whole, but even more significantly, the whole feels him to be a part of them. In nature, birds, when they have to fly to a warmer climate for winter, flock together when they start their journey. The success of their journey depends on the collective. If an individual bird does not join the group, it cannot reach the destination on its own. The birds fly in a particular formation with a respectful space between them as they fly. If they fly too close to each other, they would get entangled in each other, lose their balance and fall. If they remained too far from each other, the formation could not be created properly and they would not be able to ride the currents of air which help to propel them in their flight. Also, the leader of the formation does not remain the leader throughout the whole flight, but allows another to take its place. And this repositioning and replacing continues throughout the flight, 
until the destination is reached. The individual birds all contribute to the success of the journey. The reality of life is that we are individuals within a collective whole. If the collective respects the space of the individual, then it functions to serve the individual's aspirations and differences. Otherwise, if the collective does not respect that space, it becomes repressive. So in essence, the individual needs to respect the collective and not to go to the extremes of personal rights. And the collective must respect the individual and not go to extremes in its use of systems. Mm -hmm.